This is the Chem 1 lecture over Le Chatelier's principle. So we kind of just start with a little Le Chatelier's principle relieving stress since 1884, which is kind of funny. So we talked yesterday about systems at equilibrium, this dynamic equilibrium where there's this balance occurring, right? Where the forward rate of reaction is equal to the reverse rate of reaction. We kind of have an equilibrium, you guys, you and me, right? I don't assign you too much homework and you do your homework. That's our balance. If tonight I told you I want a 20-page essay, a three-page research project, and I'm going to go ahead and give you 14 pages of a packet of everything we've learned in chemistry so far due tomorrow, what, what would you do? Be mad, not do it, right? You'd be like, Miss Nelson, that's not our agreement. You don't give us a lot of homework. We always do our homework. We're always practicing and using it to our advantage. That's kind of the same idea. When we have a reaction at equilibrium, it's in this balance. It's in this gentle balance. And if you apply a stress to that system at equilibrium, the system will do whatever it has to do to relieve that stress. So here's that kid who's drowning in homework because his teacher decided randomly to give them way too much. And there he goes, relieving that stress, burning that homework, right? And chemical reactions would do the same thing. Think about that demo we did yesterday up here with the, the blocks getting passed back and forth. If while they were going back and forth, I started just adding more N2 and H2, the person on this side would have been like, ah, and they would have sped up, right, trying to make more product to get all that N2 and H2 off their table. So you should be writing this definition right here of Le Chatelier's principle. And I'll say it again. If a stress is applied to a system in dynamic equilibrium, the system will adjust to relieve that stress. Say it again. I'm not going to quit yet. Give you some time to write it. And there's three stresses we can place on a system. The first is a change in concentration of either the reactants or the products, a change in temperature, or a change in pressure of volume. And we're going to talk about each of these stresses one at a time. Bless you. That's recorded forever now, your sneeze. Are we good? All right. So the first one we're going to talk about is changing the concentration of either our reactants or our products. Now remember, our KQ is a ratio. It's a fraction. It's products over reactants. So if you change your reactants, or you change your products, you're messing up the ratio, the system will shift to reestablish that ratio. It'll try to keep KQ constant. So you'll see that the KQ does not change when you change concentrations, but instead the equilibrium will shift temporarily to relieve that stress. So the other reactants and products concentrations will change to relieve the stress of adding or removing a reactant or product. And I like to think about this like playing in a bathtub. I actually honestly hate baths, but if you go in a bathtub when you were little and you had that big cup, you know, probably like the Rudy's cup, you bring in there, you know what I mean? You're talking about scooping the water, you're pouring water in, you're doing all that fun stuff in a bathtub. Well, what I like to do when I think about Le Chatelier, because I like to think about my reaction being in a bathtub. And if I was to add reactants, so you see here are my reactants on the left side of my bathtub. If I was to pour water into this bathtub using my cup, the water makes a big hill just like that, right? Does water do that? Does it, you know, you have that big mound of water on one side? No, what does the water do? It flows. I love that word. It equalizes, right? So if I add water to this side of the tub, all this water that I've added will rush this direction until the water level re-levels out, right? So if I add reactant, oh, come on, seriously? <coughs> move to the front. Order. Bring. Oh, no, I didn't mean that. I meant move to the front. Order. Bring forward. What is going on? Order. Ah, there we go. Thank you, guys. So if I add reactants to this side of my equation, the reaction is going to shift to the right, or you could say it's going to favor the forward reaction. 
your reactants that you just added are going to speed up and start making more product to reestablish that equilibrium. Therefore, the concentrations of my reactants are end up going to decrease and my products are going to increase. Now, keeping in mind, you're always shifting over this arrow. So whether I add A or I add B, I have to shift over my arrows. I'm going to shift to the right. What if in that same bathtub, instead of adding water to this side of my tub, I added water to this side of my tub? Which way would I shift then? To the left, to the left, right? I get to do my reverse yesterday, and I get to do my Beyonce today. So let's make that go away. Let's bring this one up and send this one to the front. So if you add product, if you add water to the right side of your tub, the water is going to shift to the left side of your tub. It's going to favor the reverse reaction. It's going to increase the concentration of your reactants and decrease the concentration of your products. Does this make sense to everybody? The bathtub is just an analogy to think about it. Really, you have to understand what's happening at the molecular level. What if I was to remove? So instead of adding, what if I removed reactants? Okay, so I take my cup in my bathtub, and I scoop water out, and it leaves a big hole right there. Right? Makes a little tunnel. No? No? What does the water do then? It equalizes. It will shift which direction to fill that hole? It'll shift to the left. So if I move, remove reactants, it's the same thing as adding products. It's the opposite of adding reactants. It's going to shift to the left, favor the reverse reaction, increase my amount of reactants, and decrease my amount of products. And I know what you guys are thinking. You're thinking, well, I just remove reactants. Well, when the reaction starts going this way, you're going to end up making more of them to reestablish that balance. You see how we're putting a stress on our system at equilibrium by adding or removing things on one side or the other? And then, of course, you guys probably can figure this one out. What if I scooped out from my bathtub over here? What would happen? It would shift right and move this to the front. Sorry, people at home. Make that go away. If I remove product, my reaction will shift to the right, favor the forward reaction, increasing my amount of products, decreasing my concentration, my amount of reactants. Let's do a couple practice problems. You got that written, everybody? All right. So arsenic can be extracted from its ores by reaching, reacting the ores with oxygen. This is called roasting. Mm, that's interesting. I didn't know that to form this arsenic oxide of sorts, which is then reduced using carbon. So this is some fancy-pantsy reaction. We don't really need to know that. All we need to know is what these following things, how it will affect our system at equilibrium. So we got our two-way arrow. We know we are going to affect our equilibrium. The addition of carbon monoxide. Draw the tub if you need to. Okay. So here's my bathtub. If I add CO2... I mean, excuse me, CO, carbon monoxide. I'm adding water to that side of the tub. Which way will I shift? To the left. So am I favoring the forward or reverse reaction if I'm shifting to the left? Reverse. A cool thing about this or a thing you need to pay attention to is how they're asking. We might ask you, does it shift left or does it shift right? We might ask you, does it favor forward or favor reverse? We might ask you, how does this affect the concentration of? For example, what if this said... How does this affect the concentration of, well, there no, wouldn't be a concentration of carbon, but we'll go with carbon. How would this affect the concentration of carbon? Well, if it's shifting this way, are we making more carbon or less carbon? More, right? What about the removal of arsenic gas, okay? So instead of adding, I'm scooping out right there in my bathtub. Which way will I shift then? To the right. How would that affect my concentration of carbon? It would decrease it, right? The carbon would have to go and make more of our products. So this favors the forward reaction. Any questions about effective concentration? OK, let's talk about our next stress then, which is a change in temperature, OK? A change in temperature. 
when you have a change in temperature, remember our equilibrium constant is dependent on temperature, so if you change the temperature, you actually do change the KQ. So your rate's going to change. Um, the reactants and products concentrations will change to create this new KQ. Here's the thing about temperature. You can treat it like a reactant or a product. We've been doing this for a while now. Endothermic, you put energy in. We say, well, heat is a reactant. Exothermic, you take um, energy comes out. You can treat it like a product. So I'm going to let you have a second to write that all down. And then I'm going to have you guys write what I just said down kind of as a review. The KQ because KQ is dependent on temperature. Okay, so kind of our review for, for um, temperature. Remember, if something is endothermic, your delta H will be positive, and heat is a reactant. So you can take that heat, and you can put it on the left side of your equation, anywhere. Usually I write it all the way over here, but it doesn't matter what order they're in, right? If it's exothermic, your delta H is negative, and heat will be a product. Well, once you know where the heat goes, you can just treat it like a reactant or a product. You can do exactly what we just did. So if I'm heating something up, do you guys think I'm adding heat or removing heat if I'm heating something up? Adding. And if I'm cooling something down, am I adding heat or removing heat? Removing heat. Just like in the last stress, I either added reactant or product or removed reactant or product. If heat is a reactant or a product, you can figure it out. Let's look at it. Back to our bathtub. I think it's the bathtub. So, if it's exothermic, which side did you guys say I put the heat on? On the product side, you have to know that. So the heat is over here. If I increase the temperature, I'm adding to the heat on this side. Which way will I shift? To the left. So in an exothermic reaction, if you add heat, it shifts left. In an exothermic reaction, if I removed heat, scooped it out right there, I cooled down my reaction, I made it cold, which way would it shift now? To the right. So in an exothermic reaction, if I remove heat, I shift right. Favor the forward reaction. Let's think about endothermic. Where would I add the heat in an endothermic reaction? On the reactant side, I'd add it over here. Add heat. Doesn't matter how much heat. We're not doing any calculations with Le Chatelier's. You're literally just looking and saying, it's endothermic. However much heat there is, it's always going to be on that side. So if I add heat, which way will I shift? Yeah, I'll shift to the right. Opposite of what it was. For exothermic, exothermic, that was a weird way to say it. I don't know what I'm talking about. Exothermic. And if I remove heat in an endothermic reaction, it will shift left. It will shift in the reverse direction to create more reactants and create more heat. It's like if you cool it down, it's going to do what it has to do to heat itself back up. Questions on that? Do a couple practice problems. So it says predict whether the forward or reverse reaction is favored as temperature increase. So it's important that we look at that. So we know we are adding heat. This first equation they give me, N2 plus O2 yields 2NO. Is it endothermic or exothermic? We do know. I hear endo. Why'd you get endo? Because it's positive. They tell us our delta H right here. It's a positive sign. If your delta H is positive, you had to put heat in. So which side do I add the heat to? 
to the reacted side. I could write, I could write 181 kilojoules to this side. Or if I wanted, I could just write the word heat. Or if I wanted, I could just say kilojoules. Because again, it doesn't really matter how much. I just need to know which side of the equation it goes on. Now, it says I'm increasing my heat. I'm increasing my temperature. I'm adding heat. So I'm adding it to this side. Which way will I shift, guys? To the right. So is that forward or reverse that's favored? Forward favored. In this next example, is this endothermic or exothermic? Exothermic. We know this because the delta H is negative. So where am I going to add the heat as a reactant or a product? Product. You could write plus 198. Remember, when you put it in the equation, the negative sign and positive sign tell you what side to put it in, but you always put it in as a positive value. Or you could just write heat. So you know heat's on this side. And again, it's telling us we're increasing the temperature. We're adding heat. So which way will this one shift? To the left. Therefore, it is reverse reaction favored. Any questions about temperature? It's honestly the same as concentration. You just have to have one extra step where you realize what side your heat is actually on. Am I endothermic or am I exothermic? Any questions so far? Y'all look so tired. Yeah, I'd either tell you the equation with the heat in it or I'll give you the delta H off to the side and you can put the heat into it based off the sign of the delta H. All right, our third and final one is change in pressure and volume. Again, because temperature is constant, KQ doesn't change. The concentration of our reactants and products will change. And something you should know by now is only one state of matter is affected by a change in pressure and volume. And what state of matter is that? Gas. Solid, liquid, aqueous, none of those change when you change pressure. So when we look at change in volume of pressure, you only look at gases. This is the number one mistake you guys will make. You'll try to look at the entire thing. So all you got to do is count up how many moles of gas you have on either side. Now I can explain pressure and volume to you individually, but we know that pressure and volume are related. Who remembers how pressure and volume are related? Let's say as pressure increases, what happens to the volume of something? It decreases. What kind of relationship is this, guys? It's inverse, and as pressure decreases, volume increases. I think it's easier to think about this property in terms of volume. So if I ever get a pressure, and this is just me, okay, you guys can memorize both, memorize pressure instead, but if I ever get a question in pressure, I change it instantly to a volume question. And you guys are going to see this. I'm going to show you how I do this. So if they say, in this problem, pressure is increasing, I scribble that out, and instead of writing pressure increase, I write volume decrease. And I think about it in terms of volume, because it makes more sense to my to me in terms of volume. So I think about it like a party house. If pressure is low, my volume is big. My house is, is Westlake huge, okay? If my volume is low, it means my pressure is high. If my volume is low, my house is small. You guys get how volume works, right? So I'm talking about gases. If I had gases, could I fit more moles of gas in the big house or less moles of gas in the big house? More moles of gas. What about my little house? If I have a small house, do I want to invite more moles of gas to my house or less moles of gas to my house? Less. So let's look at this. One, the only state of matter that matters <laughs> is gases. So what I do, if it's an increase volume, decrease volume kind of thing, I first add up all the moles of gas on my reactant side. How many moles do I have? Four moles of gas. And then I draw my arrows again. Did you see there's one mole of A, three moles of B. How many moles of gas do I have on my product side? Three moles of gas on my product side. So if I increase the volume, make my house really, really big, would I rather have four moles of gas or three moles of gas? Four. You're going to shift to the side if you increase your volume. 
that has more moles of gas. You got a bigger house, you might as well invite more people to your party. So in this example, and again, it's dependent on what equation you're looking at, but in this example, that would be a shift to the left. Bigger house, I'm going to fit four moles of gas in it. If I have a smaller house, do I want to have four moles of gas in my house or three moles of gas? Three. So if you decrease the volume, you shift to the side that has fewer moles of gas. In this case, that shift would be to the right. Again, it totally depends on the equation. So don't write, always shift to the left or always shift to the right. That's not true. It's whichever side has fewer moles of gas if you have decrease in volume. What about pressure? Well, whenever I see a question in pressure, I just change it in my head to volume. So this says decrease pressure. What is that in volume? That's an increase in volume. So my house is bigger. So I shift to the side with more moles of gas. You can remember pressure separately, or you could just only think about it in terms of volume. Big volumes. Yeah, if you decrease pressure, your volume goes up. You're going to shift to the side with more moles of gas. If I increase pressure, well, if I think about that in terms of volume, that is a decrease in volume. My house is getting smaller. The space I have to hold my moles of gas is smaller. And I will shift to the side with fewer moles of gas. Pressure and volume only affect gases. We've got two slides left, guys. We're almost there. So some examples of these. Predict whether the forward or reverse reaction would be favor when volume is reduced. Okay? So we've got to keep that in mind. Volume is being reduced. Well, if it's changing volume, what is the only state of matter that matters? Gases. So how many moles of gas do I have on the left side of this equation? Think about it. Six. This is a solid. I always write this. Whenever I see a problem, I literally go above it and I write how many moles, so I keep it in mind. How many moles of gas on the right side? None. This is a liquid. This has zero moles of gas on that side. My volume is being reduced. Is my house big or small? Small. Which way will I shift if I have a small house? Will I hold six moles of gas or no moles of gas? No moles of gas. I will shift to the right. That's favoring the forward reaction. All right, let's look at this next example. How many moles of gas are on my left in this example B? Four moles. And how many moles of gas are on the right? Four moles. Cool. I'm reducing the volume of my house. Would I rather shift from four moles or would I rather shift to four moles? What do you guys think? Four moles, right? That's the right answer every time. What's going to happen then? Am I going to shift at all? No. There is no change. If your number of moles of gas are the same, it doesn't have a preference one way or the other if you change the volume and temperature. Uh, not, I'm sorry, volume and pressure, not volume and temperature. I'm sorry. I misspoke. Finally, we talked about how catalysts speed up reactions, right? You put them into reactions and they come out of reactions. Well, as far as Le Chatelier is concerned, it's still going to reach the same equilibrium. It's just going to get there faster. So it was like yesterday when we did the block thing, it took them a, a minute or two to reach that state of equilibrium where it was the same on both sides. Well, Le Chatelier's would be like if I gave them a bunch of coffee and had them do that same activity. The equilibrium would be the same. They would just get there faster. So you need to remember that a catalyst has no effect on equilibrium. So if I say, well, how will equilibrium shift if I add a catalyst? The answer is always, it doesn't. Equilibrium is established quicker, but it doesn't change that equilibrium once you get there.